new custom versions. And this is our eighth episode in our series on how to convert your car from gas to electric. Well, in this week's episode, we're going to talk about relays and contactors. We're going to talk about why use a relay, relays, uh, you know, common uses for them in conversions, types, ratings, what's a contactor, my weekly recommendation, and what to look forward next week. This is kind of a 2017 uh, version of a series we did a few years ago. And so we're designing it not to be repetitious. I recommend that you check out our previous video on relays. And I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can check that out. Excellent video, highly recommend it if you wanna know about relays. In checking out that previous video, I realized that did a pretty doggone good job. We talked about the history of the uh, relay, what it was originally, what its original use was, uh, how they work. I mean, we dissect one, go into all the detail of how they work, talked about different types of relays, and as well as different types of switches and their uses, and a whole bunch more. So what's left to talk about? In this episode, we're gonna kind of specialize on the relays function, not just in general, but what it's used, you know, how it's used and what's it used for in a conversion. Why use a relay? I mean, why not just use a switch or why, why do you need a relay? Well, basically a relay is a remote switch. It's a uh, electrical mechanical device that is typically used to either uh, activate a circuit from a distance or to activate a higher current, higher voltage circuit using a smaller current voltage switch so that you don't have to run larger wire at distance, for a distance. So, um, and, and there's other reasons why you'd use a relay. Now, we we're gonna use relays in a conversion, and I'm gonna tell you about the ones that we use and why we use them, and you'll see, we'll be answering that question of why to use a relay. Now, what's a contactor? I mean, we're going to talk about relays and contactors. Well, contactor is basically a high-powered relay. That's, that's the, the uh, easy, simple definition. We're going to talk about uh, relays used in conversions. And just off the top of my head, I came up with 12 common relays or relay uses in a conversion. So let's, let's go take a look at the, at the list. So let me go through the list that I came up with real quick, and then I'll come back and touch on some of these a little bit more. First off, uh, a 12 volt power relay. Here's an example of a 12 volt power relay. Here's our 12 volt battery, the vehicle's 12 volt battery. Uh, in other videos, we explain that uh, we use a 12 volt auxiliary battery or whatever you want to call it in this case. It's not a starting battery, anymore, but we do need it to run our 12 volt onboard electronics. So we have our 12 volt battery and we have our power relay right here. Now the power relay is going to be activated by a switched circuit on the car. So we're going to take a meter and find out a circuit that is activated when we turn on the ignition. Well, we're going to take off a little bit of power from that same circuit, and the only power we need is enough to activate the coil on that relay. So we don't need the 
you know, change any wiring. It's not going to affect anything adversely. And that's the only impact that we're going to have on the 12 volt uh, system on the car, the stock 12 volt system. It, once you turn on the key, it's going to activate this relay. And this is a single pole, single throw relay. And once it does, we're going to have 12 volts come directly from the battery, go to an auxiliary fuse block that is going to have all of our conversion 12 volt systems are going to be separately fused and get their power directly from the battery. So we're not intermingling with any of the 12 volt wiring that existed in the vehicle. The conversion is a separate system, but they will share a common power source. So from the fuse block, it's divvied out through the fuses to all of our 12 volt conversion circuits. So that's a 12 volt power relay. All right, so that was our 12 volt power relay. Then there's a pre-charge relay that's used with the controller. That's to pre-charge the capacitors in the controller. And then we have what we call the safety interlock relay. That's a relay that we use as part of the charging system so that when you plug the vehicle in to be charged, it activates that relay and it opens up the circuit to disable the vehicle. We talked about this in more detail in a recent video where we talked about the relays in a JLV 404 and, and possible uses. So, and in other videos also. So if you want more information on that, check out some of our other videos. And then, of course, uh, the two relays in the JLV 404 that I just referred to. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Sixth relay is the relay that we use to turn on and off the DC to DC converter. And we talk about DC to DC converters in other videos. Basically, it replicates the alternator uh, in the internal combustion setup. So we have to have a way to keep that 12 volt battery charged. Well, whenever the ignition's on, this relay is activated and it turns on the DC to DC converter, which charges, takes power from the traction pack to then charge our 12 volt battery and also share the load, just like an alternator does, and share the 12 volt load. In some setups, there's also what they call a KSI relay, key switch interface relay. Some controllers need to have uh, a voltage signal from the traction pack. And so this relay is initiated by the uh, ignition switch being turned on, and then it switches a low current, high voltage signal to the um, controller. We have a main contactor. Again, just a heavy duty relay. The main contactor's job is that when you turn on the ignition switch and the controller comes on, then you have a contactor which closes and takes and connects the battery pack to the controller. That's the switch that turns the power from the traction pack on to the controller and from the controller to the motor. So that's number eight. And then we have a relay if the vehicle has power brakes, we typically uh, uh, you know, have to keep the power brakes. You want to replicate uh, that vacuum system, and that's done using a vacuum pump, which pulls a little more current, and so we use a relay to um, basically draw current off the battery through a fuse and through the relay contacts and to the uh, uh, vacuum pump. Same way with power steering higher energy requirements, so we use a relay to do that. And then for the heater, whether it be a ceramic heater or a uh, uh, reservoir that's heated, 
uh, has a heating element in it for liquid cooled setups. Uh, either way, we're going to use one or two contactors for that. Um, sometimes we run dual element uh, reservoirs, and so we'll have a high and low uh, contactor. And then a contactor or relay for the air conditioning system. Uh, there's different ways to do it, but uh, typically if you're running an electronic air conditioning, uh, it'll have a separate controller which will use a relay to turn on and off. So there's 12 of your most common relay uses in a conversion. So what are things that we need to take note of when selecting a relay or a contactor? There's a few things that you'll need to know. You just don't order one. You got to know a few things. So one of the things would be uh, the coil voltage. Okay. A lot of these in our list over here had 12 volt coils. Our power relay is a 12 volt coil. Precharge is 12 volts. The safety interconnect relay, that's a 110 volt AC coil. So whenever you plug into the wall, if you're plugging into 110, it's going across, it'll, it'll activate that um, relays uh, coil. And if it's a 220, we're running across one of the legs and again, pulling 110 off to activate it. Uh, the JLD 404 relays, they're 12 volts. Relay for the DC to DC, 12 volt coil. KSI is 12 volt coil, main contactor. Uh, boom, they're all pretty much 12 volt coils. The other thing that you would need to know would be the contact rating. And so you can't use a 10 amp contactor rating for your main contactor. It'll blow up the very first time it's used. They're typically anywhere from, oh, maybe on the low side, 400 amps, up to a couple thousand, depending on the controller and the setup that you're using. The rest of them, most of them are automotive uh, uh, relays, which will be 30 or 40 amp uh, rated contacts. Uh, some of the ones that you're operating the higher voltage on, there'll be a a contact that's rated for higher voltage. Let me show you uh, a couple of contactors that you've probably seen and just give you the basics of how they differ. So here's a contactor. Here's the coil on the bottom. Your connection's right here. There's the contacts. You can see them. This is 500 amps, uh, the rating on the contacts, 12 volt coil. Same thing. This is a uh, 12 to 24 volt coil and 500 amp contacts. Well, you can't see the contacts in this one. Well, that's because this is what's called a sealed contactor. That's basically the difference between the two of them, is one is sealed and one isn't. So they make sealed contactors to use in environments uh, where you, you, know, you want to keep uh, moisture or uh, contaminants off of them, or to keep them sealed from uh, uh, explosive fumes and gases. So two types of uh, contactors right there. Um, anything else you want to know about contactors and relays specifically, suggest to check out our previous video. Well, the other thing that you'll need to specify or you need to know when ordering your relays is the uh, switch type. 
okay? And we talked about that a moment ago when we were talking about the power relay, how it was a single pull, single throw relay. Uh, our other video, you know, the, the previous video we did on relays goes into all of those types, uh, whether it be a single pull, single throw, double pull, double throw, you know, all that information we've been through before, so I'm not going to take any more time in this video. But those would be the three main things, your, 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 your coil voltage, your contact rating, and your switch type. So what's left in this episode? My recommendation. Well, my recommendation this week is buy quality components, even if it's just a relay. If you want to know in depth about any of these topics, or all of these topics that we're gonna go over in, in at least 24 weeks that we have planned at this point, then I recommend that you take one of our three-day hands-on conversion workshops where we deal with everything in depth and answer any questions you may have and questions that you didn't know you had because you're in a room with other people and they're gonna ask questions that you didn't think of. Well, next week, we're gonna be talking about wiring. And so I hope you'll join me. I uh, appreciate you watching. We hope that you would subscribe, and I hope to be here next Wednesday. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching.